In this episode of Sparesbox Unrolled, we take a look at that 500 horsepower FJ40, we go behind the scenes with a supercar driver, and I buy another piece of shit. Well, to kick things off, we're back on the couch, and I think this week we should take another look at Mitt's alloy, because last week, you guys absolutely loved it, and I think James and I can both agree, they're wizards. Oh, mate, the, the quality of workmanship, unbelievable. Out of control. I've never seen someone weld like that. It's just out of this world. And because, James, you love camping so much, mm. am I right? Yeah, absolutely love it. Every weekend, you would just wish to get away. We thought we'd take you for a tour of how the owner of the FJ is going to be camping. So, without further ado, let's have a tour of the Mitz Aloe Canopy. I love shitting in a hole. <laughs> Well, if there's one thing Mitts are consistently doing, it's absolutely nailing it when we send them work. And the FJ behind me is no different. It looks the part on the outside and on the inside, it works the part. Today, we're gonna to be showing you the ins and outs of this train canopy, including the 12 volt fit out. It's now been painted body color, which is a phenomenal match to the rest of the bodywork. And they've had to serve a couple of purposes for the owner of the vehicle. For starters, it had to house this gorgeous canopy, and secondly, it had to be functional as a farm ute. I'm gonna to touch on that in just a second. The tray is about 2,100 long and around 1,800 wide. The canopy itself is 1,800 long, which we found to be really practical use of space, maximizing the chassis we had at the back of this 40 series. Now in the otherwise dead space underneath the tray like this, we've put these under tray toolboxes, which is a really clever use of that area. In these back skinny ones, we've managed to put an ARV twin compressor for airing up tires, that kind of thing. In the front, we're actually gonna be putting the battery for the vehicle because there's not a lot of space in the engine bay. We have these boxes on both sides. Now I mentioned before that the tray is the perfect home for this canopy, but one of the fantastic things about Mitt's alloy is that this all alloy canopy with the easy sliding legs can be lifted off in about 20 minutes or less. What does that mean? Well, it means you've got a huge usable tray space underneath it for all your farm related activities. The best part is we've got these little silver mounts on the side, which means the tray sides that we had body color as well can slide straight on. And in just a matter of about half an hour, you've got a fully functional ute bed ready to go do your day's activities with. Just before we walk around to the back of the canopy, two things you can't actually see are the headboard water tank and the poly tank underneath the tray. It's another fantastic use that mitts have for that dead space. We've got about a 30 litre poly tank up here in the headboard and around a 70 litre tank underneath, which means for the 12 volt pump that we installed, we've got 100 litres of drinking water ready to go. The back of this Mitz alloy tray and canopy needed careful consideration for both functionality and practicality. Obviously with the exhaust, the trundle drawer and all that stuff underneath the car, the spare had to be relocated, which led us to choice number one. We put the spare on the back, keeps it up away from the ground and gave us space for a whole lot of other goodies under there. Speaking of goodies, we've opted for a 900 long trundle drawer, which is perfect use of otherwise dead space. You can fit a fishing rod or even a rifle diagonally, which is perfect because it's lockable. In the middle, we've got an alloy fold-up ladder, which is fantastic because we're gonna be running a Motop rooftop tent on this when it comes time to mount that up. And 500 horsepower LS under the bonnet means pretty thirsty on fuel. So an extra 20 litre jerry can out the back just to help them get to that extra little bit remote campsite. I reckon that's enough about talking about the outside. Let's come over to the business side and have a look inside the canopy. Now this side has got one of the most extravagant four-wheel drive living situations you may ever see, not to mention the 12 volt setup is pretty well off its chops. Over here is where they're gonna be living, cooking, storing food, all that kind of stuff. Starting up here, we've got the 2000 watt Red Arc inverter, which is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the 12 volt system in this car. Heaps of cigarette sockets for charging all your accessories the biggest, most gorgeous looking Dometic fridge you can get. It's the 95 litre dual zone on the big Clearview Easy Slide. Again, it's up fairly high, so being able to drop that fridge right down and reach in and see what's going on is an absolute necessity. Up here is probably one of my favorite things, and I've got one in my own car. It's the kick-ass travel oven, 12 volt, gets up to 180 degrees. You can cook roasts, meat pies, pizza pockets, you name it. When you're on the go, that's an absolute godsend, especially around campsites when it gets a bit chilly gonna have hot tuck up ready to go. Another big all alloy drawer system, which is perfect. We're gonna be setting this up as basically a pantry and it doubles as your slide out prep bench, which is really cool too. Locks the first way and it even keeps coming. So you do have a heap of usable space in this car. 
Well, let's get this away. We can jump over to the other side of the car and have a look at that mint 12 volt. This is the storage in 12 volt side. So we've got a stack more storage, more of those gorgeous alloy drawers here for clothes, bits and pieces, camping gear, that sort of thing, as well as these gorgeous tray tops, which means you can strap stuff down, all your big bulky stuff, marquees and all that kind of business. But this is what everyone really wants to see. Now this is all mounted up on this fantastic integrated Mint Alloy 12 volt panel. And what are we talking about? Well, we've got all the red art fruit that you could ever want. I'm talking ever. Starting off with, what's the power source, power bank behind this? Well, we've chosen a 200 amp hour Enerdrive lithium battery to run everything. How are we keeping that charge? Well, we've got a 150 watt Red Arc solar panel mounted up on the rooftop tent that's gonna be going on the roof of this canopy that's gonna pump watts back into this system. In terms of battery power, we've got a 200 amp hour Enerdrive lithium sitting here in the MITS alloy battery tray, which is really a good choice for this sort of setup when we have a big inverter like what we are, and they plan on using induction to cook their dinners. Controlling everything is the Red Arc Manager 30 and its extension, the Red Vision system, which is such an advanced piece of technology, and I recommend it to anyone that's gonna be doing long distance, big budget touring. One of the best things about the Manager 30, I find, is that it's this little guy. You pull up at home, get into the garage, you're not gonna be using the setup for a while, or you're just at a caravan park, you can plug this straight into your 240 volt mains. That's gonna pump 240 volts of charge straight back into your battery, get it topped up, ready for your next remote trip. <laughs> Another piece of favorite technology that I've even got in my car is this Red Vision screen and the brains behind it. In this particular setup, this little guy is responsible for turning the fridge power on, running the inverter, the lights, the travel oven, everything. The best part is you can see exactly what your batteries are doing from the screen here. You can see how much power you're drawing, how much you're getting, and how much longer you can continue that sustained battery draw until you do run out of charge. So it's constantly keeping you in the know. We've also got an LED light dimmer here for the internal canopy lights, heaps more power sockets, and Anderson because why? Well, you can never have too much power options. And up here is a sneaky little mod that I suggested. I've got the same in the Naughty 40, is that that inverter over there runs a little sneaky 240 volt cable behind this panel here. So you've got remote switches for your 240 volt power there. And we've briefly touched on all the goodies in this train canopy setup for our 40 series. And we have so much more content on this car, it's not funny. If you wanna find out more stuff around the engine, the cab, the paintwork, bodywork, and all that sort of stuff, you're gonna to have to stay tuned because in the next few weeks of Unrolled, we're gonna be talking about all of it and showing you the intimate details. Anyway, that's it for me, back to the couch. Sambo, that was awesome. If I ever have a momentary lapse of judgment and sign myself up to go to camping, I want to do it in something that's got something to mix in. <laughs> then may as well do it properly. And that's yeah. doing it properly. That's true. It's almost glamping really, isn't it? It's a little bit. Now that we've touched on something that Sam loves, we're going to go into something that I really love. Working on BMWs. <laughs> so we, this week we... <laughs> when you say... This week... We had the Bull Rush M4 BMW in the mm. shop again. This time, Sambo, set of white line spring, uh, sway bars. Lovely. And some adjustable rear control arms. <laughs> you would have had so much fun. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sure. After some time at the track in its new wrap with its aero, we've brought it back to the workshop and they've decided the next step is a set of white line sway bars front and rear, as well as a host of rear control arms just to alter the geometry of the factory arrangement and make it a more track orientated car. It's early in the morning, there's an awful lot of work to get done, so I'm gonna get stuck into it right now. We've just gotten the front and rear sway bars out of our BMW M4 here. It was an absolute Sam Young of a task, pain in the backside that is. You might've seen we managed to get it out without taking the cross member all the way out. The internet said we had to take it all the way out. It's only holding by two bolts, but that doesn't count. So now all we have to do is get these SPL parts arms into the back end, white line sway bars in the front and rear, button it all up, drop it back down, 
and open a cold one because my will to live is draining. So let's get it done. All right guys, that's it from us here at Spares Box. What a fantastic day it was. Real cruisy one, super easy, two hours, in and out, no problem, we do this again. Again guys, if you have an M4 at home and you wanna take on a job like this, all you need is basic hand tools and a floor jack. Have at it. What a day that was. That doesn't, that doesn't Never again, Jesus. Dropped the entire bloody subframe just to do a sway bar, like what the Same. f is that BMW? Bloody sizes all the way from eight through to bloody 24, fucking 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, what the hell? Torx bits, e-torx, everything in between, Allen key. Well, I'm gonna be honest, James, it didn't look like you had any fun doing that. It, it, I'm not gonna lie, it was a long day, man. It, it would have been. It was a really long day. And I'll tell you what else is long, doesn't matter. It's not for this time slot. A new segment. New segment actually of people that have had very long days is the bot ass mechanic for the Mercedes F1 team. That guy was having a shocking day. For those that don't know, it's funny because it's Mercedes. They pitted bot ass mid F1 race. He was actually up top 10. He was in the points contention. And basically this clown has cross, cross threaded the wheel nut or stripped it or done something along those lines to the point where that car was retired from the race, Bottas got a DNF, and they're still shipping that car back to its HQ with the wheel attached to it. So, well, it wasn't gonna come off. No, someone, <laughs> it wasn't gonna come off, that's true, safety first. So someone was having a very bad day there. Yeah. All right, up next. Ah, this is a contentious one. This is a quick one, actually. For everyone that's out there speculating, guessing, and being a fucking jokester, you're all wrong. The 300 series is getting a 3.3 V6 twin turbo diesel motor. That's it. No more guessing. Shut up. Yay. Only a six. Yeah. Only a six. Disappointing. But making more power than the V8. Progress. Progress. All right, and the third piece of news we've got this week is this Commodore. Ah, yes. Now, uh, this isn't your average Smurf Blue Commodore. No, just this as ugly though. Just as ugly. This is Peter Brock's Daily Drive. Right, and that would make it the one that sold for some insane price. Just over a million bucks. No. Which is insane. The only thing it needs now is those same lovely white wheels, but in 19s. That would really top that car off. Maybe some chop springs. Great. Great. You got that's, a temp also, that's an awful lot of money, which... A mil the side of the pretty archaic thing. You've got to sit there with your accountant and go, do I buy a VK or do I buy a house? And I think I know which I choose. Neither. Okay. Motorbikes. Kidding. No. no. Well, that's quite the new segment. Someone wasted a million dollars. Toyota have produced probably an underwhelming engine. And uh, it was a bad day to be that F1 mechanic. Very bad. Speaking of underwhelming Toyota engines. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stop you right there because before we show the people what you're talking about, we go behind the scenes with Jade No Jada at a supercar event where we get to see what his downtime looks like. So, take a look. Everybody loves the sunshine. Like I feel like you should just have like a, a keyboard in front of you. Like sunshine. You know? Yeah. Like it's just so like... Really Folks get down in the sunshine. And a bit of pressure. What's going on? That's Never mind. Butchered it. Butchered it. That's all right. Oh, well, normally race cars, but putting would do. <laughs> Golf's not so good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. When one's not doing so well, I can blame the other. Yeah, that's right. Ready? Thank you. Thank no you, worries, so guys. Much. Thank you. When the Nissan gets a bit outdated, I'll bring it around. 
I've just put the challenge out there to Ollie. If he can throw his golf ball up, hit it with his putt putt club into a hole over on that putt putt course, I'll give him everything in my bank account. He did not have anything in his bank account. No <laughs> way. That's one attempt. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot better than I expected. I <laughs> can't even say just on the green. <laughs> you opening that? <laughs> That's what happens when you got the fake ray burns and your mate's got the real ray burns. <laughs> Race ya. <laughs> Triple chalk. Triple chalk. Triple chalk. I'm gonna get some dirty feed. He's not here, he doesn't have to know. You're coming with me and we'll go get some when you know. He's still rolling. Look like you're doing alright at it. I have to like walk. Oh, yeah, you walk when you do it. Uh oh, a little too much zip on that one. Hold it. Hold it. No! What have you bought? Tell the people. Well, I bought a financial mistake, as it turns out, but... That's everything you bought. Yeah, that's true. That's nothing new. <laughs> smells pretty terrible. It's horrifically slow. And my God, is it ugly. What do you reckon? Uh, I reckon you know what I reckon. Yeah. Let's see what the people think. Yeah. So, as it happens, I work with cars. I love cars. I enjoy driving cars. And sadly, I've ended up with another car. This is my new toy. It's a 1981 RA40 Toyota Celica. It's got an 18RC single cam two litre motor in it, five speed manual, and well, it's a little bit ugly at the moment. It's completely original. It's a one owner car, and it's not gonna stay like this for long. We're gonna start messing with it, mucking with it, making it cool, and trying to make it a little bit quicker. We've got a lot in store, so stay tuned, because we're building an RA40. So with the RA40, we're starting off with the basics. We're gonna be changing steering wheel, the wheels and tires, the springs, maybe the shocks. We're also gonna be chucking in some white line goodies as well. And then, and only then, we've got something pretty exciting planned that I'm gonna be using James for uh, to get a little bit of help with. In the meantime, let's get our hands dirty. Phase one of Celica mods has been a great success, starting off with it desperately needed brakes and wheel bearings. So we tackled that first up to make it at least safe to drive on the road. Then we had to make it handle a bit better. We put some lowered king springs in it, as well as a white line heavy duty rear sway bar and a heavy duty adjustable white line rear pan hard. Plus the interior was a little bit gross and the steering wheel was huge. So we chucked a genuine Momo in with a SAS boss kit, as well as a new shift knob. And up the front, just to finish off the looks, we put in some Toyota Heritage headlight covers, which I think ties the whole thing in really nicely. Now that we've looked after that stuff, next up, we're gonna be addressing a few things under this guy right here. But before we do that, I think James and I have got a couple of bits and pieces to pick up, which is pretty exciting. So you guys are just gonna to have to stay tuned. Well, I'm James Andrew. And I'm Tits McGee. Go Sam. yourself, San Diego.